Do you want to know what it is? Uh, yes. The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now, in this very room, you can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What are you talking about? That you are a slave, mm. Neo. Actually, uh, Neo is just my online handle that I use for Fortnite. My real name is Martine. Born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. Do you have chamomile tea? You have to see it for yourself. This is your last chance. After this, mm -hmm. there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. Okay. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Deep the rabbit hole Okay. Blue pill, sleeping pill, red pill, DMT. I get it. Fuck it. I'll take the red one. Remember. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Bottoms up. Now, in computer graphics, matrices are used mostly to transform between two or more different coordinate systems. And um, let's first have a look real quick at what a coordinate system really is. Um, so uh, let's say that we have a game object. Let's say we have this rocket. And, um, uh, and in order to describe that rocket, let's say all the points of the rocket, right? All the vertices, um, uh, like we have to store that somehow, right? And, and so uh, the way the positions would make sense to be stored is is uh, with respect to, let's say, for instance, the center of, of the rocket, right? So you have something like this. So the way that things are stored in memory or on disk um, would be like this, where every point is, is stored in reference to the center, let's say, or maybe to the bottom or something like that. Now, that makes sense for, for just the rocket itself. But let's say we want to make a game, and now we want to spawn that rocket and, and fly it around, let's say, a planet over here. So now, like in this situation, it makes more sense to express all of your coordinates um, uh, with respect to the planet, right? So, or with respect to the world. So these would be the world coordinates. So here already we have two, diff <coughs> two different coordinate systems. We have one, one for the object, which would be which would be the rocket, and then one for the world or for the game as a whole. Um, and, and so every different object could have its own coordinate system. So if we have um, a little flying saucer over here, that might have its own coordinate system as well. Um, so that the alien that's sitting inside of this flying saucer, uh, its position is expressed in terms of the flying saucer's coordinate system. So. So in, in computer graphics, there are lots and lots of different coordinate systems for different objects, for cameras, for different projections and stuff like that. Uh, and, and so let's go through that in, in, in this video. Um, so uh, let's see here what that looks like on a, like on a more kind of mathematical level. So coordinate systems are used to to describe a point in space. Uh, so let's say we have a point over here, point P. Well, the first thing we need is we need an origin for that. We need some sort of, some sort of point that we can all agree on uh, that, is, that is fixed. So, um, uh, and that works in the real world uh, like the same way. So if I have a GPS uh, um, coordinates, well, those GPS coordinates are with respect to the origin, right, which is, uh, right on the equator and right where the zero, uh, the zero line is. 
Um, so we need an origin. Uh, that's the first thing. And then the second thing is we need some basis vectors, which are basically steps that you take from the origin in order to get to your point. And the standard basis vectors that you are probably familiar with are, are just the x and the y vector, or you could say the, this is left, right, and this is up, down. Um, and so if we, if we use those basis vectors and we use an origin at 0, 0, then basically we get this standard thing that we're all familiar with, and then we can say, okay, point P uh, could be described as a point at location 1, 2. And what that really means is, well, you start at the origin, and then you take one step in the x direction, followed by two steps, right, there's a 2 over here, followed by two steps in the y direction. And so that is how that works. And, and over here it might seem like very obvious uh, that that is the case, and it might seem, you know, why am I explaining this in such a, you know, kind of cumbersome, cumbersome way, but like it's only, it's only very obvious because our basis vectors are the standard basis vectors, right? If we, if we change these basis vectors, then we can move that point anywhere we want. Um, so let's play around with that a little bit. So this is a, uh, well, first of all, this is uh, called Shader Toy. If you have never worked with that before or, or, or played with it before, it's a great website. Uh, to make quick graphic effects. Uh, I use it all the time for all kinds of things. Also, it's a, it's a shit ton of fun, so I definitely recommend that you, that you check that out. I have a beginner tutorial for that, or I have many tutorials, uh, but for the beginner tutorial, just check in the description below. Uh, in this video, this is more kind of theory, so you don't really need to know about Shader Toy. Uh, you could still follow along. Uh, just uh, click on the starting point uh, link also in the description and then you could just follow along you don't have to sign up or nothing you can um, you can just play with it right there <clears throat> so there's a bunch of stuff here uh, that I'm not going to go over because that's not what this video is about again if you want to learn about shader toy check out my beginners tutorial for that uh, so what I have here is a uh, it's a standard grid with our basis vectors and a point that I'm drawing and the point here is at 1 comma 1 and so I can move that point around uh, to wherever I want. Um, and I can also uh, change the basis vectors. Although right now, uh, if I change the basis vectors, it will only change the vector. It will not change the point because we haven't done the point transformation yet. So, so let, let's make that transformation that we just talked about. So the transformation is the new, the transform point is the, is the x component of the point, right? Which is the, this one over here times the x basis vector, which I described over here, okay, plus the y component times the y basis vector, okay? And so now if I, um, if I compile that, and by comp you can compile stuff by pressing this over here, or you could just also press uh, Alt-Enter on your keyboard. Uh, so now nothing changes because my basis vectors are, uh, uh, are the standard basis vectors. But now if I change these basis vectors, you see that uh, that point also moves, which is kind of cool. So I can, I can scale things like this, right, uh, in the x direction and in the y direction. Uh, but I can also mirror things by, by making one of these negative. So I can just flip one of the axes around. Um, and I can, I can rotate, uh, and I can also do... I can shear, which which basically means it's just like pushing pushing stuff like that, kind of pushing it off to the side, uh, and I can do that like that. And so, like every time here, like the rule is still the same. It's like you start you start at the origin and you take one step in the x direction, which in this case would be here, followed by one step in the y direction, right over there. So that stays the same uh, regardless of of how these vectors are are oriented, right? So I can just also put it <clears throat> put it like that. Uh, yeah. So here, uh, basically, what we just did here is like uh, point point one comma two uh, is one times the x direction plus two times the y direction. 
which is 1 times this vector plus 2 times that vector, which comes down to 1 comma 2, right? Um, but now, what can we do with the, uh, where does the matrix come in? So if we, if we look at this point here and we transform that point, 3 times something plus 2 times something else is 3 comma 1 with our basis vectors. Um, well, these basis vectors, uh, we can write them very neatly inside of a matrix because we can just do that where this is my first basis vector and that is my second basis vector. Um, so let's, let's make that like that. So let me just go over here. And so instead of this here, let's make a matrix that does the same thing. So I'm going to do mat2 because it's a 2 by 2 matrix. M equals mat2. And then here I can just write down uh, my, my basis vector. So I could do 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Uh, and that wouldn't, uh, well, obviously I have to also um, transform it then. So let me just go over here and say P equals M times P. Okay, so now nothing, nothing has changed because, uh, because this is just our standard stuff. And by the way, so this is kind of like this, right? Just, oh, well, not like that, but like this. Um, and so now if I change this, it, it, moves, it moves my point. Um, uh, but I'm not going to do it like this. I, I, like, I'm, I'm going to use these basis vectors instead so I, don't, so I can just change it over here. So instead of uh, two values, I can just put my one basis vector there and my other basis vector there. Okay, that does the same thing. And now if I change my basis, you see that that seems to work. Okay, very cool. So now you could ask, well, why does it work? So this is our matrix and that is our point that we want to transform. And, and the way matrix multiplication works is, is, is that you just take the vector and you move it uh, on its side and then you stick it in like this. So you say 3 times 1 plus 2 times 0. And that is my new x component, which is 3. Uh, and then I do the same thing for the y component. So I'm, I'm going to say 3 times 0 plus 2 times 1, which is 2. Okay, so that is how we transform to the new, to the new point. Uh, okay, so that's how we transform to the new point. So that all seems to work fine. Uh, but there's something that we forgot, which is, uh, which is the origin. So before we had something like this, right, where we have uh, like a point and then our transform point is just 3 times the first basis vector and plus 2 times the second basis vector. Um, but uh, we didn't add the origin and I didn't add it before because the origin was just at 0, 0 and, and, and that wouldn't really change anything to the end result, right, if you add 0, 0 to it. But if this changes, if the origin is somewhere else, let's say at 2 and 4, then we need to change, like that. Like the final result also needs to change. Um, so, but now we have a problem because our, our matrix is very neat and compact just to hold our basis vectors, but there's not even any space to put, to, uh, to put the origin in there. So what can we do? Um, well, there is, uh, there is a way to do it, which is by adding a dimension. So if we, if we go from two dimensions to three dimensions, then we can do something like this. We can just add uh, a one at the end. So now my position is a three-dimensional position with a one in the, in the final place. And so now if I want to multiply that by, by a matrix, I also need to make the matrix a, a, a three by three matrix. Um, and so we just add a dimension here and then we make a matrix like this. And, and this matrix is, it still has the basis vectors in the top left corner. So here's, here's the X basis vector and there's the Y basis vector. And now we have some space to add the, the origin over here. And then the last column is a zero, a zero and a one. And that will become clear very soon why that is. So let's see how it plays out now when we multiply this position by this matrix. So for the x, we get 3 times 1 plus 2 times 0 plus 
one times two. So what this one does is it makes sure that we add this, this last value over here to the final result, uh, which is five here. Uh, and for the y, similarly, we have three times zero plus two times one plus, and again, this one makes sure that we add the four in the end, so plus one times four, okay, uh, which, is, which is that. Uh, and then for the last column, we get uh, zero times three, so this zero makes sure that, that whatever is here gets canceled out. Similar for the second one, this zero makes sure that whatever is here gets canceled out. And then lastly, uh, this one over here, uh, together with that one, makes it that the, the final result is always going to be one. And the reason why we do that is because for the transform point that we make now, uh, we also want that one in the last position so that if we ever want to multiply this again by some matrix, we, we, we don't have to reset it to one. Um, so that is the math, mathematical way of looking at it. Uh, like another way of, of looking at it, like what's actually happening here, um, is, is like this. So, so imagine, um, uh, and these are homogeneous coordinates, they're called homogeneous coordinates. If you ever want to, want to read up on them, uh, then you know what to Google. Um, and then Another way of looking at it is that, that let's say if we have a graphic, um, that we're going, what we're doing by adding a dimension is we're going like, let's say from, from 2D to 3D. So now imagine this is not just, this is not just one graphic of a playing card, this is a whole deck of playing cards, okay? An infinite deck of playing cards actually. Um, and uh, I showed before uh, what you can do with the matrix is you can shear. You can, you can make it that, so sharing would be that, okay? Would be like pushing it to the side. Um, so, so we could shear it in the, in the y direction like that, or we could shear it in the x direction like that. Uh, but because, because we made it 3D, we could also shear it in the, in the z direction, in the, in the depth direction. So, so that would be equivalent to kind of fanning out the stack or the deck of cards. And so what you get then is something like this. Um, and now you could imagine you could, you could fan it out as far as you want in order to make it that, that this, this front card just ends up wherever you want it to be. Um, and, then, and then in the end, you just pick that 2D slice of your 3D object and you have your translation. I hope, I hope that makes sense. Uh, so let's just see how we can do that in, um, in Shader Toy. So let me just go over here. And uh, let's, uh, let's see here, let's do some housekeeping here. Let's just make this uh, go back to zero. Okay, so now we have to make homogeneous coordinates or we have to add a dimension. Uh, and so for that, I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna say VEC3 and VEC3, and I'm gonna add that one in the end. Uh, and then for my, for my matrix, I, it has to be a three by three matrix now. So three by three. And then in the last row, I'm going to put the origin, which I defined already over here. Uh, and then for the last coordinate, that needs to be a one. And, and actually, I'm forgetting here that the last column here needs to be a zero as well. So it's kind of like that. Okay. Um, and so now let's see what happens. Uh, so nothing should really change now. Okay, nothing changed because my origin is still at, at, um, at zero, zero. Uh, but now if I change my origin, you can see that it moves everything around, which is pretty cool. All right, uh, so that is how you, how you do that. Um, now, there is one thing here, which is that right, like up till now, I've only transformed one point. Now, like in in um, in video games, let's say if you want to translate your 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 rocket or move it somewhere else, then basically what it's doing under the hood is it's doing this matrix multiplication for every vertex in your object. Uh, so that's one one way of doing it. Now in shaders, so here like shader toy is a is a toy for shaders. Um, like it might be more advantageous to instead of transforming the point 
or transforming like let's say a bunch of points let's say uh, you if you wanted to make a smiley with two eyes and a mouth and everything then yes you could translate all or you could transform all the points for all the eye and for the eyebrow and everything um, but it might get very cumbersome and so an easier way to do it is to just transform the space that an object exists in um, and so let's try to do that so uh, so up till now I've only done one point right so let me just uh, actually set the origin back to zero okay it's over there uh, so here I have a like I have a simple way to 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 switch to uh, a smiley instead of a point so let me just set this to false okay so now there we have a we have a smiley um, and so now how can we transform that smiley because we can't like sometimes let's say well in this case the smiley is already calculated in this other buffer over here um, or if you wanted to, to transform a texture or something like that um, then what you have to translate instead is the, is, is the space and the space in this case is the UVs Right? And, and if you've watched any of my other videos, like uh, we have transformed spaces many times already, right? Because you, you could, for instance, uh, you could, for instance, squash things by by just tra um, by translating or by transforming the UVs like this, just multiplying multiplying the x, for instance. Um, but now let's do that with a with a matrix. Uh, so let me just put this copy paste that inside of here because that's this is like transforming points right transforming points <clears throat> and uh, over here it's transforming the space right transforming space um, all right so to transform space uh, let's actually hmm, okay so now it's over there all right um, so now over here we have to transfer space so we have to do something to the UV coordinate so I'm going to say UV uh, equals and then let's say um, M times UV which is my, my, my matrix times my UV and that's going to give me an error because <clears throat> because my UV doesn't have that homogeneous third coordinate uh, and so I could do it similar to how I did it over over here I could just define this as a vector 3 over here but but I'm gonna do it slightly differently I'm just gonna do it in place so over here I can make this so this is a vector 2 I'm gonna turn it into a vector 3 like this okay and now it's still gonna give me an error <clears throat> because now this is still a vector 2 over here so I have to cast it back to a vector 2 after I'm done with my stuff so I can just um, use swizzle for use a swizzle for that I can just stick it in a bracket and then say X Y just only take the first two components of this and that uh, will get rid of my error for me so now let's just uh, see uh, like let's try and see uh, what this does so um, let's uh, let's change uh, let's say the X basis vector to to two okay and now something interesting happens because before if I set that to 2 it would actually make it wider but now it makes it smaller and that is because now we're not changing the point we're changing the space that the point exists in um, which is kind of the other side of the equation so so if we want to do the same transformation we have to do the inverse of what we did before uh, and luckily with matrices it's very simple to get the inverse uh, matrix which is by using the inverse function so I just that's a built-in GLSL function um, that you can use so now now we have a proper stretching of space notice by the way that like this point now is not a circle anymore because we stretched the space that it exists in meaning that like it's not just the center of the point that moved it's like all the points in, inside of the dot also got moved and, and they got stretched in different ways um, so that's one thing to to, to keep in mind um, alright so now uh, let's play with this a little bit let's go over here um, because um, well here let's first see if we can move this okay so that seems to work can move that over um, 
and uh, we can also let's make a let's make a rotation matrix. So let me just put that back here. So I made many different rotation matrices in other videos, but let's just do it one more time here. Uh, so for a rotation matrix, first we need an angle, the angle of rotation. So I can say float a for angle equals i time, let's say, and i time is just this number over here. So that's a number that changes as as you move forward in time. Uh, and then I need the sine of that angle, which I call S. So S equals the sine of that angle, and C equals the cosine of that angle. Um, and then for my basis vectors, I'm going to say uh, the, so let's say if this is at zero, if we're all the way at the beginning, at zero, the cosine of zero is one. So I, I, I can use the cosine here, and then here I'm using minus the sine, and then over here I use the sine and I use the cosine. And that makes you a 2D rotation matrix. So now if I press play, I have a rotating smiley, which is kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> so now this, this matrix does potentially does two things. It, it rotates, but it also moves the origin, right? So um, let's, let's move this and see what happens. Um, so what it does in this case is it it um, it rotates first and then and then it translates. So that's why it's still rotating around its own center point. Um, now it can get a little bit confusing when you do two things with one with one matrix. Uh, so I prefer to split that out into a different matrix. Um, and, and then multiply those matrices. Because the cool thing with these kinds of transformations is that, so the entire transformation is encoded inside of the matrix, um, and, but you can have different matrices that encode different transformations, and then you can just pick and choose very quickly to, to um, you could say, okay, move it first, then rotate it, then shear it, then move it again, or something like that. And, and now that just becomes a multiplication, like, like multiplying multiple matrices together. Uh, so let me just show you real quick how that works. So this, let's just call this a rotation matrix. So I'll call it rot. Uh, and then over here I say the inverse of rot. Okay, so that wouldn't change anything except for over here because it should also be called rot. Okay, um, so that's the rotation matrix. Let's make another matrix. Let's make a... Uh, a translation matrix. So mat3, uh, I call it offset, offs equals mat3. And so the rotation matrix, uh, sorry, uh, the, uh, the translation matrix, uh, I'm going to only translate and not do anything else. So, so what I want to do here is make my basis vectors, which is uh, for the x, 1 comma 0, right? And then the last column has to have a 0. And then for the y, I'm going to do 0, 1, 0. Uh, and then in the last column, I'm going to do that offset uh, that I wanted, right? So let's say uh, I'm going to offset 2 to the right and uh, minus 1. So down 1, and then the last, the last uh, part here should be a 1. And so now let's see what we can do here. So uh, let's see what happens if I do rot times offset times p. Oh, no, hang on a second. We're over here right now. Uh, so here, officially, we also have to do the inverse again. I mean, if you're always doing inverse for everything, then it's probably better to define them in inverted so that you don't have to do that inverse. Uh, but for now, let's just do this. Uh, so offs. Okay. So now, uh, so now what, did, what this does is, it's a, like what you're saying here, is like, okay, rotate first, and then after you've rotated, uh, translate it, okay? Um, so, but like multiplication for matrices, it, like it, it's not the same when you multiply it one way or you multiply it the other way. Um, so, so this is different from from take. If I take this out and I do that that offset first, um, now it's going to offset it first and then rotate. So it's totally different. Um, so yeah. Uh, so that is a rotation matrix, that is a translation matrix, and let's make a shearing matrix as well. So I go, I go over here, mat3 shear equals mat3, and then let's build that. 
so let's first make a normal matrix. So for a normal matrix, I would have a z 1, 0, 0, and then 0, 1, 0, and then 0, 0, 1, right? So that would be a no shear matrix, kind of. Um, and then, uh, but let's shear this. So um, for that, I can just say 0.7, let's say, and 0.7. Let's see what that does. Uh, so let, let, let me just get rid of some of this here and uh, call this shear. Okay, so that's what that matrix does. Uh, and so now, we, again, we can play with the order of things, right? So let's see what happens if we do a shear and then a rotation. Uh, so shear first, rotate second. That just rotates the sheared object, okay? But if I do it the other way around, Now it rotates, uh, it rotates first, and then the rotated object gets sheared. Uh, and then uh, for good measure, we, so we can do this, this, and then in the end, just move it somewhere else. Uh, so that's offs times that. Okay, so now it's over there, but actually, I, I think I like it better if this is in the front. Uh, so first we're going to move it, then we're going to rotate it, then we're going to shear it get something like that. Um, okay, I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, matrices are, are used all the time in computer graphics. It's very good to get at least some understanding of it. Um, I hope that uh, this gave you that little bit of understanding. Um, if, it, if it did, please subscribe, please like, uh, please comment. Um, or not, I mean, it's your life after all, but it would be great if you did. Um, yeah, that's it. So I hope, uh, I hope you liked it, and I hope to see you next time.